to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're covering Stage 6 of Finnish Brutality 2024, Disco Stew. Now, this was a pistol-only stage, and kind of a variation on one we did last year, and also very similar to a stage we did at Lynx Brutality earlier this year. But it was very unique in the fact that the target you hit was very closely boxed in by two poppers. You knock those poppers down, you got a 60 second penalty. And in a way, it was actually a 120 second penalty because if the popper went down, and unfortunately for me, one did, you got the 60 second penalty, but you also got a 60 second penalty for not engaging the main target or not hitting the main target. You were limited to a total of 28 shots on this, and there were three spots on the ground that had a light. And the light told you two things where you were going and what you were going to do when you got there. If you got there and there was a red light, that means you had to take a shot, a strong hand only. And you could take only one shot, hit or miss, that's all you got, one shot. If you went to the light and it was green, you could take a two-handed shot. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the whole time you're carrying a kettlebell. Now, for two-handed shots, you could put the kettlebell down and you could even put it down on one-handed shots if you chose to. And the goal of this stage is to get 28 shots off as fast as you can before you par out. It was a three minute par. It was eminently doable, so don't panic there. This was a very tough and challenging stage, although at first glance you're thinking, eh, this is not so tough. It, trust me, it was. It was very stressful. I watched a lot of people struggle with this one. So, let's take a look at a video and talk about what's going on. Shooter ready! All right. One thing I noticed watching competitors in front of me is I was pretty sure it was going to be the far left beacon that went off. So I started heading in that general direction once the buzzer went off. Then started making the engagements. And uh, this is where the pistol training went off. I've always said in brutality, 75% of your engagements are with your rifle, but 75% of your training needs to be with your pistol. Because if you don't perform with the pistol, that'll cost you all kinds of points. As you saw yesterday in stage 5, not getting two pistol hits cost me six rifle hits. So while the distance you had to go wasn't terrible and the kettlebell was not terribly heavy, it, it, a lot going on here mentally. You had to, where's the light? Okay, I found the light, now what color is it so I know what to do when I get there, when I get to the right box. You're really good on and as you look down there, the orange target is what you're trying to hit. The two whites are no shoots, and if they go down, 60 second penalty plus another 60 seconds for not getting the hit. So the price of failure here is pretty high. I chose to, for stability, to put the uh, kettlebell down every time. A lot of people on the one-handed shots didn't bother doing it, or they would only crouch down, you know, so they didn't have to take time lifting. I figure, again, just like with stage four, smooth and steady, smooth, you know, and just get it done that way. Just be a s steady uh, and go as fast as I felt comfortably going, and don't try to push it too hard, because. That'll bite you, as we'll see here in a little bit. Right there. All right, knock it down. Good. Now, the funny thing about knocking that no shoot down, as you can see, it goes right down here in the video. In real life, uh, I remember seeing it, and it felt like it f uh, fell in slow motion. Felt like I got all the way to the next shooting position before it went down. So. This is why you got to be smooth and not push it too fast when the target precision required is this is this high. Because you're getting one shot. If you don't make it, you have to move on. Uh, this is where I filled my pistol, which was a Zeb 34, was really epitomized for this. It performed really well. I mean, clearly the error was a shooter. I know it was an edge hit that took that target down because later on, looking at it at the end of the stage, there's a big old chunk of paint from the edge hit that got knocked off as compared to the little dot that normally gets knocked off uh, when you just shoot it uh, straight on. So my aim was just off a little bit, but with the targets being that close, I had to pay the price. Rope there! Unload. Rope there. Nice. Overall, though, I felt pretty solid with this run other than hitting that no shoot. All right. Well, no Team America for this stage. Only video of me. Uh, the camera gremlin struck hard, as we said. And uh, so I don't have any footage of Chris or Matt for the, you guys watch on this one. This one's been a bit bittersweet for me because, as you saw, I tagged that no shoot. 
in all the brutalities I shot, this is the first time I have tagged a no-shoe. So that was a bummer that marred up a pretty good run otherwise. This was a nice challenging pistol stage. Uh, this shows we're doing the pistol work. Uh, when I can't get out to the field, I've been going to the indoor range and just doing a lot of dot torture work, and it clearly paid off here. All right, well, I may not have any footage of Team America, but we definitely have footage of Breacher. And on this stage, you can see right here, we had to pull tires. And you notice the very long rope on the tire. That was the only way you were allowed to pull it. If you picked it up, shortened it up, or did anything to reduce the friction, that was a no-go. So I got the first lap here, and for the most part, keeping up with Christopher and stuff, which is making me pretty happy there. So just slogging through this, and that's all you can do. you got to go for three minutes and just slog through, get the tire back and forth as many times as you possibly can. So uh, Patrick and Christopher and I all seem to be roughly about the same. Uh, this stage of the match, it's going well. But the friction on that tire does catch up with you after a while. You get it through and you readjust and you head back. Up and back, up and back. And you got to overcome the inertia to get that thing moving. And as you can see, Patrick's really gotten uh, some, uh, got it going there. And uh, Christopher has already lapped me. <laughs> Again, I got endurance on this one, just the speed's not there like I'd wished. But keep at it. Keep pulling, keep tugging, keep doing it. Uh, it's brutality, and these are the tasks you have when you get into Breacher at a brutality going, match. It keep really pushing. tests your physical stamina. Uh, just dragging this along is no different than uh, dragging along a, a heavy sl equipment a sled. Sometimes it's just got to be done. And as you can already see, Christopher's on the way back when I haven't even got to the end. But back to the line and uh, heading back. As you can see, the, the, the energy reserves are getting a little low here on the first challenge of the day. But that's what it's designed to do. And there we go. We got it moving. And uh, just got to lean into it to get it to go. Hi, Christopher, as he's going the other direction. <laughs> and just keep pushing on through. As you can see, getting to the finish line, still got time, still got to keep going here. A little extra tug to get it across. Good thing is your body can do the tugging, you swing in the arms just to get some uh, momentum going. Cross the line and turn around and head back. Yeah, Patrick seemed to find a uh, big burst of energy there. Good for him. I mean, yeah, he got it all the way down there one more time. We're hoping you're finding this coverage of Finnish Brutality 2024 uh, helpful and informative. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And tune in for Stage 7. we got a lot coming your way tomorrow.